hello how are you this is from tech engineering we are here today to guide you through inspection of a slab reinforcement last time we did the inspection of beam reinforcement and today we have come to do inspection of slab reinforcement together with beam before we do our concreting so um with me i will start with identifying the bars that we normally use on site and uh, from observation we have a double layer mesh here and this is the topmost bar it is called top one we normally detail it as the top one bar this is the second bar from the top we detail it as top two bar and then below here we have the bottom most bar in our slab we detail it as the uh, bottom one and then the second bottom bar we detail it as bottom two so whenever you're doing um uh, reinforcement of your slabs and and you're doing steel fixing you need to check that these bars are to the right diameter and uh, they are fixed to the right spacing for instance if i can measure here this is close to 200 we specified a spacing of 200 uh, uh, maximum so 180 is okay this is also 190 therefore it means it is okay and uh, as you observe this you also need to look at your overlaps um, if you use 30d uh, you will find the overlap of both these two bars and as explained earlier in our earlier videos you normally use the diameter of the smaller bar to determine the overlap of your bars so you need to ensure that the overlap length provided is sufficient and it is provided at the right locations uh, with that you also notice that our bars are resting on our formwork which is not supposed to be the case our bars are supposed to be spaced so that we can have our minimum designed cover so the contractor is supposed to add spacer blocks so that he spaces the bar from the formwork in order to achieve the designed minimum cover for exposure conditions and fire resistance and such i would like to show you one of them uh, here it is so here it is small but uh, this is one of the revisions that is supposed to be made here uh, so we will put a spacer to separate our brain observing on beams i want you to observe we have ensured that we maintain the minim maximum design cover and uh, from observation you can see this this is a spacer block it has been used to ensure that cover of the beam is achieved so that the bars do not rest on the formwork uh, uh, before concreting and when you observe in our beams we have done that throughout so uh, that is it also ensure that your bars are reinforced as required for instance this bar is top one and to just uh, to, 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 to your knowledge this bar is for hogging moments at the top of your beams and supports and therefore it is supposed to be top one that is where you can observe that this is a 10 millimeter diameter bar and this is an 8 millimeter diameter bar so ensure that your bars are correctly spaced the diameters and the spacing as you can observe we also have something here this is called a stool the stool ensures that we maintain the designed effective depth of our bars and from observation if we are having a slab of 150 and 20 millimeter um, cover we will need 190 millimeter uh, uh, depth from the bottom of this bar to the top of this bar so it is more or less uh, uh, almost there and this is what helps us achieve that sorry i have mentioned 190 it's supposed to be 90 millimeters so if i do that 90 is here and this is excess by around 10 millimeters uh, so it is tentatively around there so you should also observe that as you do your 
inspection. And from observation, we realize that in the middle section, we only have reinforcement on the lower layers, and uh, at uh, uh, closed to your edges, you have reinforcement as a double mesh. This is normally because we have uh, moments, working moments close to your supports, and they are not here. We, what we have here is deflection, and the bottom steel bars are able to take care of that. And from observation, our slabs are two-way spanning slabs. Uh, if you do the length and the width, you will realize that uh, there are two-way spanning slabs. So that is why they have been tied the way you're seeing. Actually, uh, you will observe that they are supported by beams on all the four edges. Therefore, it is a two-way spanning slab. Um, whenever you're doing the work on site, you need drawings. You need drawings to guide you. These are the drawings that we're using. And in addition to the drawings, you need bar bending schedules. The bar bending schedules guide you on how to crank your bars, how um, the overlap to provide, and where to space which bar exactly. Because the bars in the drawing have codes, as we will see. And then this one, you get the code and then you refer to be able to determine how to crank, bend your bars, and fix them on site. So with slabs, uh, we are almost done. I would like us to proceed to our staircase. Whenever you are doing your staircase, there are things that you need to really put into consideration. For instance, the top bar of the staircase uh, of the slab becomes the bottom bar of the staircase. I, I don't know whether we can move closer or zoom in, but from observation, the top bar is cracked at this section to become the bottom bar of the staircase. And the uh, top bar of uh, the inclined section becomes the bottom bar of the slab where uh, or that is supporting our staircase. So that is it. And you realize that in a slab, we have supports here and supports uh, uh, along the landings. Therefore, your main reinforcement bars do not run as they normally run in slabs uh, like this, but they uh, run along the flights. Therefore, from observation, you will be able to see that our bottom one, uh, this section, is a 12 millimeter bar, and then bottom two is a 10 millimeter bar. So the main bars are the ones that are running along your inclined sections. So also maintain the spacing and uh, the bar diameters as detailed and curtailed in your drawings. You can also observe that in your stairs where we normally have uh, no or, or least hogging moments we don't provide a double mesh to the enforcement instead we do a single reinforcement for bending moments at this section so with a slab that is uh, it and I would like us to check this second landing second landing from observation the top bar of the inclined section becomes the bottom bar of the landing and the top bar of the landing become, becomes the bottom bar of the um, flight therefore it is done the same way we did in the second landing please observe that and ensure it is done according to standard so that is all for now for beams and uh, you can let us know anything that we have left out that you would want us to do uh, as we're finishing up just a point to note whenever you're doing cantilevers the things you should consider and I'm going to show you one of them this is a cantilever slab and being that it is a cantilevered slab, 
you need to ensure that these beams run a sufficient length inside your structure. This is because um, when you are in the cantilever, you tend to uh, cause some rotation that affects the top bars. That is why the top bars are supposed to run sufficient length on the inside as opposed to the bottom bars. So with uh, 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 such a cantilever, sometimes you provide a, uh, more reinforcement to be able to carry the load at this section. Uh, so that is all for now. And uh, please subscribe to this channel. We will guide you through uh, inspection design and general engineering knowledge. Thank you very much and may the good Lord bless and keep you. Please press the bell icon for notifications in the future and let us know what you think about this and how to design and any mistakes that you might have observed in our inspection. Therefore, see you next time. May God bless you. Thank you.